on that local Super Talk Mississippi radio station. And you can watch good things. We are on your computer, your mobile device. Just head on over to Super Talk TV. You'll see I have Mr. Malcolm White in the studio with us today. He's joining us to celebrate 40 years of the now House St. Patty's Day Parade and Festival, which is coming up quick like in a hurry on the 23rd of March. So welcome, Malcolm. Thank you so much. Glad Not to, to make here. you feel wise and aged, but I turned <laughs> forty last year, so that would be uh-huh. <laughs> so that make that would make me almost as old as the um, St. Patty's Day parade. So take me back four decades. I yeah. wasn't really uh, remembering the parade then. What was going on in Jackson that you and some friends felt like there needed to be a festival or some kind of celebration? Yeah, I you know I had moved uh, here in seventy nine and. Uh, in 80, I was uh, running, 80, 81, I was running Oliver's and George Street. And uh, I had I had lived in New Orleans for a couple of years and grew up on the Gulf Coast. And I, I was very sort of used to cultural celebrations and events, parades, festivals. And I noticed uh, quite quickly there weren't any here. The only thing in Jackson when I got here was the Dixie National Parade, uh, the State Fair, uh, that was about it. So uh, I was running George Street, and uh, yeah, I decided I wanted to go out on my own, start my own business, and I came up with this idea uh, I called Malcolm White Productions, and I was you know, booking bands, putting on festivals, Jubilee Jam, Zoo Blues, Christmas by the River, Wells Fest, and uh, I was sitting at, uh, at George Street downstairs in the bar one afternoon, and a friend of mine who worked at the Clarion Ledger came in, Rod Cawthon, he was a, a columnist. He wrote three pieces a week. And he we were just chatting, and he asked me what I was up to. And I told him I was thinking about starting a, either a St. Patty's pub crawl or a St. Patty's parade. And he said, well, what what would that look like? And I just sort of, as I'm talking to you, I was just saying, well, you know, we get some friends, we get some floats, we'll maybe get a band, we'll just parade around, maybe go from this bar to that bar. And, so the next day in his column, uh, to my great surprise, he had written a story that said that I was <laughs> I was planning on having a parade <laughs> around at St. Patrick's Day. So He volunteered you that you were right. going to so do So I it. had to scramble uh, to get organized. It was really only about a month away, so I had to get a permit and figure out what to do. I started at, We started at CS's, went downtown, went down Capitol Street, came back around to George Street. And back then, uh, downtown rush hour traffic was a thing. There were lots of people who worked in downtown. And uh, we got this permit from the Jackson Police Department for 4.30 on a Thursday afternoon. So we... That's terrible timing. uh, We... It was great timing. Uh, (laughs) We had a police escort, and off we went right down through the middle of all that traffic to a lot of uh, waving and horn honking and we thought it was uh, excitement admiring us and it turns (laughs) out they were angry because they could not get home and there was a lot of publicity that followed that how could we possibly be allowed to do this and we just sort of took that publicity and turned it into the conversation about well next year if you give us a permit, we'll do it on a Saturday. So we've been doing it on no Saturdays. more Thursdays. Saturdays every since. Yeah. But you know, I got on the phone. I called people like Jill Connor Brown, and I said, "Hey, I'm thinking about having a St. Patty's parade." And she said, "Great, I'll be a sweet potato queen." And I was like, "Oh, okay, sounds good." And and I called the Blues Boys, and I called Sergio Fernandez, and I called uh, people at Walker's Drive, and just friends, and said, "Hey." Call Pat Bolton at CS's. I said, hey, Pat, we want to start a parade at your place and end up down at Joey's place at George Street. He said, fine, sounds good to him. And and off we went. Uh, and the first one was just a sort of gaggle of friends, pretty unorganized. Um, our grand marshal was uh, Arthur Mahoney, who was um, uh, Thalia Morrow's husband, and he was an Irishman. He was a dancer and a boxer. And he was the perfect grand marshal. So uh, there were a couple hundred of us, uh, you know, weaving our way down to Capitol Street and back. And then when we got to George Street, I noticed there was a huge crowd gathered there. So I told the Blues Boys, who were on a float, I said, look, I'll give you guys another $100 if you just keep playing. And that was the birth of the after party. 
Which is still going on today. Absolutely. It yeah. always ends. It usually ends in a crawfish bowl. That may not that may not be that way this year due to probably other reasons. But over the years, it's just really developed. And, too, there's probably a lot listening to good things, Malcolm, that it's become like a, a generational thing. Like, I mean, they go, and then they started going with their parents, and now they're going. And so on that first one 40 years ago, could you have imagined four decades later you would be sitting here with the production that <laughs> it takes to, to put the parade on now? Well, I didn't really think about it uh, at the time. You know, I was living in the moment and just trying to figure out what I wanted to do. But I knew by year three that I had stumbled onto something. It was quite obvious to me that there were a lot of people interested in this, and uh, we had huge crowds coming, and I saw lots of possibilities of ways to expand it and and develop it. And a few years later, the folks from Children's of Mississippi came to see me and asked me if I wanted to... Uh, make a portion of it nonprofit for the children, for the children's hospital. And I said, no, I don't really want to do that. You know, it is it is what it is. I don't want to try to pretend that it's something else. I'm not trying to pose it as a, a, a nonprofit. It, it's a parade. It's a celebration. And they came back a year or so later and said, once again, we want to ask you if you'd be interested in involving us in the children's hospital. I said, nah, I don't think so. And they said, well, would you at least come to the hospital and see what we do? And so, Rebecca, I went to the hospital, and uh, after a tour, mm-hmm. uh, I was sold. And we have been working with them ever since. We we raise awareness. We raise money. Last year, we gave them a $100,000 check. Uh, but it's been a great relationship to have a relationship with UMMC and uh, Children's of Mississippi. So, you know, that was part, another part of it that we just sort of stumbled into. You know, we added a race, a serious race last year, or a race, a run for the rainbow. It's on the weekend before. We now have two weekends. Um, it used to be one weekend on a Friday and a Saturday, and now it's uh, two weekends, two Saturdays. Uh, so on the 16th this year, We'll have a marathon, a half marathon, a 5K. A oh, 10K. that's grown then, because it used Huge. to just be a 5K. When it was part of the parade and it was the morning of the parade, it was a 5K. And then there was the pet parade. In fact, we still have that, but the, let me talk about the parade, yeah. the, the run a minute. It, it used to be the old Lamarathon, which was the first really serious uh, run race that we had mm-hmm. in Jackson. Lamar Life was the sponsor, and when they gave it up, I took it over, folded it into the St. Patty's umbrella, and then last year we pulled it back out, put it on a separate weekend, and and let the good folks at UMMC, uh, Selena Daniels in particular, organize it. And as I said, it's a marathon, half marathon, a 10, a 5, and a fun run. And it it raised almost $80,000 last year. And uh, they started. They had like 700 runners last year. They've already got over 1,500 signed up this year. It's a huge success, and we've again we've made one weekend, two weekends. Now on the weekend of the parade, uh, on the 23rd, the Friday before, we have an event down at uh, uh, Cathead Distillery where we have music. We actually do have a crawfish bowl this year, even though they are nine ninety five a pound. <laughs> you had the luck of the Irish to be able to, <laughs> to come out to and enjoy that. Have them. And we uh, we gather there and we walk up to Hallamow's and there's music and there's a concert and there's festivities. And then the next morning, uh, on the morning of the parade, always the fourth Saturday of March, we have the children's parade, the pet parade, the children's festival, and then the adult parade at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, followed by the after party uh, at Hallam Owls and Martins uh, down on Commerce Street. And it's been going that way for free. And it feels like for years, and it feels like, Malcolm, that it just keeps growing every year. You mentioned there's no way to necessarily tell, but in, I don't necessarily in terms of in growing in terms of uh, participants. It just seems like things that you're providing the community to do in a very small period of time. Um, do you have any more room to put anything else? Uh, you know, interestingly enough, we used to have a putt-putt golf tournament. No way. I don't remember that. We used to have a regatta on the reservoir. Uh, and, and so over the years, it has evolved, changed, been different things at different times. But we're pretty happy with what we have now with the two weekends, with the run, with all the activities on parade day, 
working with the Children's Hospital. We're now a nonprofit, and we have a fund at the Community Foundation for Mississippi. Every year we raise $150,000 to put this on, and we have lots of great sponsors who contribute to that. And, Malcolm, uh, can you stick with us? Of course. I'd love to talk about the culture. We're talking with Malcolm White. He is with the Howe's St. Patty's Day Parade. They're celebrating their 40th year. Coming up next. And you can watch us. We are on your computer, your mobile device. Just head on over to Super Talk TV. We're still talking with Malcolm White. He is with Howe's St. Patty's Day Parade and Festival now. It's grown over the last 40 years. It's still benefiting Children's of Mississippi. It's coming up uh, March 23rd downtown here in the capital city of Jackson. Who's going to be your Grand Marshal this year? This year it's Walt Grayson. And uh, Walt is a a well-known storyteller, writer, news uh, anchor, uh, news reporter. He's host of Mississippi Roads. Um, he's a legend, really, in this community, in this part of the world. And uh, our our theme is telling the Mississippi story, which we think he uh, epitomizes uh, the person uh, who tells that story. And uh, everyone really can tell the Mississippi story, but we think Walt is uh, particularly good at it, and we uh, want to celebrate him. Walt and his good work this year. So, as the Grand Marshal, he get to. Is there is there a tradition? I know it's the first, but like, is there yeah. a special float? Is there some <laughs> special tradition around that for the St. Patty's Day Parade? Well, uh, Walt's going to ride in a convertible. Uh, we give the Grand Marshal an option of what they want to do. Sometimes they walk, march. Uh, sometimes they ride in a convertible. Sometimes they ride on a float. Um, but Walt's choice was to ride in a convertible, so he will lead the parade behind the color guard. Um, Walt will will be the at the front of the parade, and and really their job they don't have a job, but their responsibility is just to you know speak about the parade, speak about the importance mm-hmm. of the celebration, and particularly Walt, you know, because he's in the news, he's in the media business, he's a well known figure. Uh, you know, he. I saw a piece in some magazine yesterday where someone had interviewed Walt about being the Grand Marshal, and you know, gives him a chance to uh, talk about that experience. But uh, their job is to have fun and to uh, you know encourage others to do likewise. If you don't have fun at the St. Patty's Day Parade, it's your own fault. Let me just <laughs> say that, Mal- Malcolm. Say it out loud. <laughs> say it out loud. So you combined your love of Mardi Gras, have living in New Orleans for a while, and then the idea of the Rites of Spring, which is like kind of that St. Patrick's Day celebration. What what about the St. Patty's Day Park? Because you could have done just a Mardi Gras parade here in Jackson. I mean, I know 40 years ago they weren't as popular as they are now, even spanning to Drew, Mississippi, you have Mardi Gras parades. But why did you want to do something separate from Mardi Gras? Well, that's a good question. I, at that time, uh, in the early 80s, uh, I was producing events, as I said, and I, I tried all sorts of things. Uh, we actually created a Mardi Gras crew here uh, called the Crew of Kazoo. Uh, no, I'm sorry. That's one of our marching groups. The Crew of Yazoo was our Mardi Gras crew. And, and we had annual Mardi Gras parties, and we rode in parades like the Dixie National Parade. We didn't have our own parade. But, you know, Jackson, in my view, Jackson was not a Catholic uh, culture, and that's generally where Mardi Gras comes from. It was uh, so the St. Patty's thing seemed more palatable, more accessible to people. One thing about St. Patrick's Day is everybody's Irish on St. Patrick's Day. That's always been the way it is. That's always the way it will be. So it's very easy to get everyone jazzed up about being Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, so, and I was running bars, and people associate, you know, bars and the Irish and drinking and that sort of stuff. So I was having these St. Patrick's parties at George Street, and they were hugely successful. And it was my idea was basically to put that party on a float, march it up Capitol Street, and just see what happened. And that was really what I did. And... But again, because it was just everybody was attracted to it, I could tell uh, it was universally accepted. And, you know, off we went uh, with that theme. You know, I was, as I say, I was trying lots of things at that time music festivals, 
celebrations and this St. Patty's thing just just took off. Just took off. And I think too you also connected with the Children's of Mississippi which just gave it a really good sort of cause and sort of for folks to come out. You know, you feel good about coming out having a good time if it's also for a good cause. But also you created this whole sort of culture that sprung up around the St. Patty's Day um, parade. You talked about the crew of Kazoo as one of them. Mm-hmm. Share with us if we're not familiar with some of the traditions or some of those crews that show up and really look at this as kind of like a reuniting of friends and everything every year well i think of it as a homecoming and i think of this weekend as the weekend where many people who grew up here who went to school here who have family here choose to come here for that weekend because they can they can visit and they can also have a big time so it has become this uh weekend in the spring uh as we are celebrating the rites of spring, the changing of seasons, the coming of summer, the passing of winter, uh, you know, it's it's great to get out, uh, get outside. And here's this wonderful celebration with music and food and dancing and, uh, you know, carnival atmosphere. So it just it fit perfectly into the calendar. Uh, it's after basketball, before football, baseball's just getting started. I mean, you could get into all these reasons why maybe it works and other things didn't work. But we have all of these traditional groups who march and parade with us, uh, many of them for 40 years, some for 30. We, uh, The Old Tuck Society is a marching group that I'm in, the crew of kazoos we talked about, the green ladies, there's uh, the buckethead judges of their own entity, uh, the rude men, they've been with us since the beginning. Uh, lots and lots of these groups, the Nugget League, have their own little party in our larger party. Uh, they all have their own costumes. They have their own themes. They all raise money independently for Children's of Mississippi. We all put it together at the end of the of the day. But it, it creates... Um, you know, a lot of excitement uh, and, again, this camaraderie and this homecoming and this getting together once a year with your, your buddies, your posse, your group, celebrating and doing good things, you know, uh, for our community. And it brings a lot of people downtown and it creates an awful lot of uh, economic impact. It's about $10 million to the local economy. Nothing to sneeze at. And... Uh, creates a lot of tourist activity a lot of people come and fill up the hotels and the restaurants and they spend money and they come from all over jill connor brown alone brings people from multiple countries multiple states uh it it's become sort of a local phenomenon and uh i renamed it as you know 11 mm-hmm. years ago for my brother uh, hal white who passed away from a brain aneurysm and who dearly loved this parade uh, so, you know, it's it's been through a few evolutions. You know, there was a period where the Sweet Potato Queens had their own parade in Fonderin called the zippity doo uh, and they came back a few years ago, and that's been great. And uh, you and I were talking before we went on the air. There was a New York Times piece just a week or so ago about the North Carolina chapter of the Sweet Potato Queens, and it reiterates the, uh, the sort of... Uh, importance and the significance of what Jill has done by creating uh, this whole Sweet Potato Queen movement all across the country, across the world. And they gather here, you know, on the fourth Saturday weekend, fourth weekend in March every year, and they join in the fun. So it's locals, it's people from out of town, it's people from all across the globe. So if you're listening to Good Things, you've never been to Saint, the St. Saint Patty's Day Parade, Malcolm. How how would you st- – that sounds like a silly question. How would you start? But how would you start, especially if you're, like, coming in? I mean, is there – like, would you go and see the parade route? Do you have, like, tips for beginners to the parade? Like, what what would be your best advice? Well, uh, first time in, you just want to watch, you know, get a hotel room, get downtown early that morning, uh, walk around, visit with people. People start tailgating on Friday at noon – they, they stake out their spot on the parade route, and they set up camp and tailgate, and they're there until Sunday. Uh, and and they're, they're, they're welcoming of other people. Mm-hmm. People, uh, you know, we have all of these free – the whole thing is free except the after party. So there is no cost. 
one can just meander about, uh, enjoy the children's activities, the pet parade, the adult parade. There's we do we have lots of throws, so one can. You know, leave with a stash. Leave with all kind of good parade stuff. Uh, music um, all over the place, uh, costumes. Uh, Wear your green. Yeah. I mean, we'd love for people who've never been to come and, uh, you know, come to the after party. You know, everyone's welcome. This is, Rebecca, the People's Parade, and everyone is invited to be a part of. You got another 40 in you, Malcolm? Sure. No, I mean like years of the parade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got it. You got it. Yeah, I mean, we've set up, I know we got to go, yeah. but we set up a whole nonprofit entity that funds and operates this. We have uh, volunteer uh, advisory groups. I have two or three people on staff now. It's a big operation. Mm-hmm. You know, we raise $150,000 every year to do it. We give 100000 at least to the children of Mississippi. So it's it's set up for the future, for the long haul, with or without me. I've done my part, and someday you can take over. Oh, no. I, but I hope me and the parade have 40 more left in us. But I appreciate your time, Malcolm. It's a great thing to do. You guys stick with us. we got more coming up next.